right, this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com today with another exciting episode for you coming at you from my backyard garden here in the winter time. You know, despite not having things like tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and some of the more interesting, delicious crops that I love and enjoy, I have a copious amount of leafy greens planted from, you know, Tokyo Bikina that's actually doing quite well to different kinds of uh, collard greens and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and some really cool uh, cauliflower here man this cauliflower is like uh, oh man this one's purple totally cool it's all protected in there but we're not gonna talk about any of that today we're gonna do a Q&A for you guys actually <laughs> so I like to take your guys' questions and I apologize you know I get many different people ask me questions underneath my videos over email over Facebook over everywhere <laughs> every orifice <laughs> and um, I, I just possibly can't answer them all and so I basically just answer questions uh, in videos like this if you do submit a question to me you can post it on my YouTube discussion page on my YouTube channel or actually email me um, through the YouTube email system. I pull questions out of there and then we'll include it in a Q&A session like this. Now, if you do have a question that you want me to answer personally, I do have a way you can do that it's through my uh, Fiverr campaign. So for $5, I'll actually give you a phone consult for 10 minutes, answer any questions that you may have to the best of my ability. And uh, you know, all the money that is raised through Fiverr uh, for the uh, questions and all that stuff goes to transcribe my videos so that people that are hearing impaired, people that are in foreign countries that don't understand English uh, can get transcriptions and then that can get, get converted into foreign languages. So, you know, uh, your support for that campaign uh, definitely helps me out to make my information, get this information out to more people so that more people can start taking food independence and growing their own food instead of having to rely on the grocery store plus having a higher quality food. I mean, I love doing this stuff. In any case, uh, the main question today is from a reporter that's doing an article on me. So I thought I'd share his questions with you guys and uh, so you guys would know the answers plus he could uh, use this video to write his article because I'm not a big typer. It's much easier to talk. All right. So a question is from uh, Kenny Coogan. I see that you joined YouTube February 2009. Is that when you started making gardening videos? All right, Kenny, yeah, so I started making gardening videos right in 2009, and the story behind that is, you know, I had been gardening in the periphery of my yard, like around the whole yard, you know, like most people do. You guys may have like a front yard with some beds off to the side, growing some edible plants, or, you know, a nice huge backyard with a raised bed or two in the backyard off in the periphery. But in 2009, I really came to the realization that it was important to grow a larger percentage of my food than I previously was because if you leave it to industry they're not getting the job done they're not producing the highest quality they're not producing the best taste and what they are producing actually is cheap food and I want to give them that you know the industry is producing some incredibly cheap food both in dollar value to cost to buy but also you know in in quality you know you guys get you pay for and even if you're shopping at Whole Foods, it's not the best <laughs> quality food. You're going to pay a lot of money. And Whole Foods, from what I've seen, sometimes marks their produce up two to three to four times the amount that they're buying it for just because you're shopping at Whole Paycheck. All right. The reason why I started a channel, actually, because I was inspired by the Dervais family who lived down in Pasadena. I saw some videos that they had out on how much food they grow in one-tenth of an acre. And I'm like wow that's cool man I could do that and then I started researching more trying to find more videos on them to see how they did it because I wanted to model them and basically copy what they're doing in my place but unfortunately they don't really provide any free information on how to do what they did so then what I had to do is I had to actually figure out how to do it myself and in the process I decided to make videos to share this with others because a big part of my journey in life is to help my fellow man you know for those of you guys that may not know, I almost lost my life when I was in my 20s. I was hospitalized with spinal meningitis, which was caused by complement immune deficiency syndrome, which the doctor said I had, and they said I might not make it out of the hospital alive. And when you're in the hospital about to lose your life, and you know, all the money in the world is not gonna save you. You can't write the check, Mr. Doctor, $1 million, do not cash unless John walks out of here. Millionaires, trillionaires, gazillionaires lose their lives every day because they didn't take a proactive approach in their health. And plus, all the money in the world wouldn't do me anything. And what I really learned is that 
my greatest gift is my health. The second greatest gift and what I can do is to share what I've learned with my fellow man because if you just want to be greedy and work your whole life just to get rich, what is all that good for, right? But I feel such such joy when I get emails. When I when I hear that people I've changed you guys' lives out there. Especially for the kids. Have gotten like people to eat healthier foods, grow fruits and vegetables, and get healthier one person at a time. I truly believe that if more people ate more fruits and vegetables, got off the processed foods, we would have a much different world. And especially with people taking more responsibility for what they need in life, you know, for their food instead of relying on others to do it. And, you know, my mission is to just make the world a healthier place one person at a time by people growing their own gardens to make the planet greener, to be more sustainable, and to get people healthier. And, you know, I'm just doing my small part. And I want to encourage all you guys out there, all you guys have influences over friends and relatives and, and people and family and people that you know. I mean, I've gotten a large influence just over my YouTube channel, people that I actually don't know. And I want to encourage you guys, all, all the guys out there that have benefited from my work on learning about different unique plants that have amazing healing capabilities, about learning how to grow, motivating you to grow, to pay it forward and to help other people to see the light, to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, because it will make you healthier. To juice more fresh fruits and vegetables, to blend them however you need to get them into you. The more of the fresh stuff you could grow yourself and get into you instead of eating processed junk food and too many animal products, the healthier you're going to be. And this in turn will make the planet healthier. I truly believe if, we, if everybody was gardeners, grew their own food, knew what it took, ate it and was healthier, you know, the world would be way different. We'd, we'd be like, we'd think a lot more about nature and the impacts that certain things would instead of just kind of like leading lives with blinders on, in my opinion, like many people are doing. So uh, I guess that's pretty much the next question. Why did you start making videos at that time? I made videos to share the knowledge with other people so that people that followed me would have some guidelines on how to do it because I had to figure it out. And I'm one of those guys that'll I'll figure stuff out. And I know many of you guys out there that watch me like me because I'm kind of like a kind of like an engineer. I'll figure stuff out how to do it the best way possible. M many of you guys out there are not, you know, and that's cool too because I'll make the video show you guys how to do it. And then you guys could do it if you want. And then it says, uh, what do you attribute to your popularity of your gardening channel with 180,000 subscribers and almost 30 million views. So, um, I probably have over 184, 85,000, I don't really check, uh, subscribers now and over more than 30 million views now. What do I attribute that? Uh, I mean, mainly I have a no-nonsense approach to gardening. You know, I, well, I'm not trained as a botanist. I'm not trained as a horticulturist. I've never went to school for anything about growing plants. I'm all self-taught. So I'm basically... Just one of you guys, and I try not to talk over you guys' heads. You know, I just tell like it is. I try to be entertaining, fun, crack a few jokes, and a few off-humor jokes sometimes that many of you guys appreciate, and some of you guys don't. And I'm just being me. I'm just being, being open and honest and share with you guys. Not putting on any fronts. Not trying to be drab. You know, and, and it just works. People like when you're real because we see so much fakeness in the world today and all this, especially on TV and even reality shows. I mean, like some of those are scripted, man. And I want to let you guys know that all my videos are unscripted, right? This just comes off the top of my head. This just comes out of my, a blessing that I was given to be able to do this. I don't have a script. I don't read off any cue cards. I don't have a transcriber, like all the programs, you know, and it really takes, I think, a different kind of person to be able to do this kind of work, like unscripted, and just know all the stuff I know, and I'm so glad I'm able to do it. Another reason for the popularity, I think, is because I've done a lot of things right with my YouTube channel. You know, I did, well, I didn't go to school for horticulture. I did go to school for marketing and I used my marketing background and some of the
things I've learned on YouTube to market it more effectively to get views because it is, you know, there's companies out there, junk food companies and all these companies, you're being bombarded every day with ads for bad stuff. And I'll be the first to say that I am marketing to you, you know, the good stuff to do in life and how to grow food, how to eat it the best way possible. And, you know, that's probably why it works so well. Plus, people get the results. I show things on my videos that other gardeners do not show. I'm probably the most traveled YouTube gardener out there. People usually make videos at their home, which is cool, but I mean, I travel for fun, mostly. And when I'm in new places, I make videos, so you guys never know where I'm gonna pop up. I have many friends doing what I'm doing. I meet many new friends, I meet many people along my journeys, and I get to learn from each one, and I get to share that with you guys. So I have, you know, a wide knowledge base of people that I learn from that I get to share with you guys. And so if it, I mean, I'm biased, but if there's any one gardening channel you watch on YouTube, it should be mine. Because I, I bring you things that other people don't bring. Now, yes, there's certain people that are really cool and they're, they really focus on certain things that I don't really focus on that I might gloss over because I have a handful of videos about aquaponics and I'm, I'm going to do that one of these days. But I really like to get people excited about the topics and, you know, get them to see a new light, you know, especially the people that have never heard about some of these before. How I really have some good introductory videos where I try to take what farmers tell me that may be scientific and kind of break it down into common man's words. And that's probably another reason why I got a lot of views, plus some people might like my off-humor jokes sometimes. All right. In your videos, you're very enthusiastic. Why are you so passionate and excited about gardening? I mean, that's another reason why I may be getting views. Like, a lot of people like gardeners. I don't know if you've seen a lot of YouTube gardeners, but I mean, especially ones that are educated in formal education and universities. They're all like real scientific and they talk like this and you have to do it like this and you can't do it like that and plants only need 16 minerals. Man, screw all that shit. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, did I give you a finger? Sorry. I'm really not into that stuff, you know. I just like to try things and see what works because, yeah, although science, and I respect science in many levels, sometimes science gets it wrong, especially when science nowadays is being paid off by large corporations to do, you know, to do studies and all this stuff. But I'm really excited and passionate about it because it's literally my life. Like, I'm not, like, trying to play YouTube gardener or anything like that. I mean, I am a gardener. I just take you guys along my journey. I'm just sharing you guys as my journey. And in life, I'm a really pretty happy, enthusiastic person. And I'm just, this comes through on the camera. And especially it's a topic that I'm really excited about. Like, you know, a topic that there's no other topic in the world, in my opinion, that can change your life more than gardening. And people simply do not understand this. Because... We are all what we eat. And people think they could get away with eating processed foods, junk foods, and be healthy. And that's just not true. I mean, I know the power of the fresh fruits and the fresh vegetables. And I simply want to share that with you guys because I want you guys to be as enthusiastic and excited about not only gardening, but about life as I am. Just one-tenth of how excited I am. I mean, so many people this day, especially if you go to Chicago, I mean, in the winter, everybody's wearing black. They seemed kind of drab. They're cold. They're not excited. Like, this to me is like super boring. And I mean, if you're living in Chicago and you're like that, that's cool. But I want to encourage you guys to get excited. I mean, even if you live inside, you could be growing a garden year round and get excited because when high quality food hits your taste buds and it lights you up that's simply exciting i mean i'm also excited about it because these are the foods that saved my life you know i had to change my diet i had to do something different and i'm not going to screw around with things that maybe halfway work i really want the best and the plants to me are the best and it's just people don't realize this and i want people to get excited about plants it's not normally something to get excited about but it, it excites me, and I want to get some of this, at least rub a little bit, one-tenth of one percent of it, off on you guys. Let's see here. 
what is your most popular video on the Learn Organic Gardening channel? So on my Growing Your Greens channel, my most popular video these days actually is a video I did with a, with a unit that's sitting right aside me, by, beside me. It's called the Garden Tower. And basically it shares with you guys how to grow a massive amount of food in just like a four square feet of space. It's basically taking a 55 gallon drum they modify it, make little holes so you could plant, you know, vertically up it. You could also plant in the top. Plus, it also has worm composting, so it can actually break down the waste in there and make nutrients for the plants. And you know, I've enjoyed using it. There are, are some challenges I've seen with it, including like, you know, to water it. They need a more efficient water distribution system in there because the bottom dries out more than the top. Um, you know, I mean, basically it took a 55 gallon drum and modified it to work as a planter. I'm glad to say that they are now revision two and they had just had a Kickstarter campaign to uh, improve it and hopefully they've gotten some of these design problems out and they made it even better. I, I look forward to getting one of those guys. But you know, it's clear and evident to me that by that video and by another video, my second most watched video is how to grow food in the snow. People want solutions, whether that's a solution to grow on their patio and their you know, condo or whether that's to grow in the snow if you live in, you know, a northern climate year round. And there, I want to let you guys know that there are always ways to do this. And some of my most watched videos are basically solution based videos, you know, on how to do things when you want to do them that I can share with you guys. And so those are the best watch videos and I will continue to make these videos. And that's why I want to encourage you guys, if you were watching me for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now you might not always agree with what I say and something that I'll agree with is something my girlfriend's uh, father said. He said, John, if you're not pissing off like 25% uh, of the people, you're doing it wrong because then you're just like saying party line crap. And we know the politicians do that. I will never do that. You know, I'm going to say things how I see it and you guys might not always agree with me. And you know, in this culture that we're you know, grown up in and with religions, things are either right or they're wrong. If you're driving 56 miles an hour on the freeway and this posted speed limit is 55, are you right or are you wrong? If everybody else is driving 65, well, technically you're wrong, but everybody else is doing it, so it makes it all right. But I want people to have this gray area, like the speed limit, right? If you're going 56, are you, are you illegal? Well, technically, yes, but you're just keeping up with the pace of the traffic, and unless you're going 20 miles over, you know, two cu couple miles over, cops are not going to, you know, ticket you for the most part unless you live in Katati, California. But, um, you know, I want you guys to have a more open approach, you know, because I say some weird stuff, you know. I say some, th and I show things on my show that you're not going to see other places. And I want you guys always to be open. Whether you use the ideas or not, don't just click the unsubscribe button because you don't agree with one video or five videos that I did on cannabis, right? Because you don't think it's a, it should be legalized or whatever else. I don't care what you guys think. I'm just sharing my opinions and I want you guys always to remain open to hear a new way. I mean, that, that is the power of literally YouTube and to be able to post an individual's opinions and thing on, on things. So anyways, uh, getting off track here. Let's see, uh, how is backyard gardening today different from backyard gardening 10 to 15 years ago. So, you know, nowadays I see backyard gardening getting more into the mainstream. Now it's still nowhere near where it needs to be. But back in the olden days, you know, like the farmers that lived out on acreage 10, 15 years ago that moved in the cities, they wanted to have a little garden and most city folk could care less about growing their own food because if you could buy it at the grocery store, why grow it? And there's people today on YouTube that promote you know, hey, I could get bananas for 30 cents a pound. Why am I going to grow my own? And, you know, I have a friend here in Las Vegas. He's growing bananas. He has to cover his plant, bring it in on the wind inside. He's like, John, I'm telling you, when I have these bananas, you know, they're, they're going to be the best taste bananas. And I told, told him I want one. <laughs> but people are now understanding that food is critically important. And the way that food is grown, not only for your health, not only for the taste, especially you know this if you're a chef, but also for planetary health and getting food more localized and, you know, to prevent emissions and all this, you know, industrial farming that's basically, for the most part, you know, using synthetic chemical derived fertilizers that are polluting the environment. And anyways, farmers would move outside into the cities and then gross and then grow stuff because that's what they did outside and they do it on a smaller plot. I think back then, I mean, my grandparents grew their own food but when my parents moved into the city neither of them grew their own food even though they could 
And one of the greatest blessings that I had as a child was the next door neighbors who moved into the city from a farm. And uh, it was the Johnsons. They're now, you know, passed on to a better place. And as a kid, like, the, their next door is what I have in my backyard now. <laughs> and, like, I mean, I used to hop fences when I was a kid. <laughs> Go into everybody's backyard. Nobody in the whole area had a backyard garden like the Johnsons next door. It's all raised beds in back in the day. <laughs> and I'm like, I used to hop their fence and like pick their food. <laughs> it was a tough fence to hop to because it went up and then it came out so that you'd have a catwalk, but then to like climb back up out of it was a bit difficult. But I'm like, why are they growing their food if you could buy at the store? Because you know, I was not taught to value the food. And they did it just for fun. You know, they weren't really serious. They did it for their hobby, for fun, you know. Now, instead of, I see it transitioning from a hobby or for fun into being one of the most necessary things for every person li living anywhere in the world. All right. What would you like to see improve in backyard gardens? So what I would like to see improve in backyard gardens is literally... I want to see every backyard garden in the country and in the world improve the quality of what they're growing by adding trace minerals. That's a mo by far the most important concept I teach, the trace minerals, plus also adding the microbiology into the soil. Chemical agriculture and standard fertilizers, you know, basically wipe out, I mean, a couple things, organic matter. And the microbes, we also need the trace minerals. I want everybody out there to add trace minerals in the form of rock dust or ocean-derived sea minerals. There's a really good book out there by Dr. Maynard Murray talking about, you know, using the minerals. I'll put a link down below the video. Using the minerals to grow high-quality plants and why it is so needed. I mean, that and also adding in the beneficial microbes that help break down the minerals to make them bioavailable for the plant. Worm castings and properly made worm castings is one of the best and easiest ways uh, to do that. Of course, also fungal dominated compost and bacterial dominated compost adds organic matter and also, you know, some of the microbes. Also, there are special like microbe supplements that you can put in your crops that I'll have some episodes on in the future that are also other good ways to get these guys into your garden. And that's what I want to see. I want to see, you know, higher quality food production because when you have more nutrients available for your plants, it makes gardening so much easier. You have less pest issues, right? You have less disease issues and you have better tasting and more abundant harvest so that you guys could be eating more food. Be sure to check my other videos. I have videos on these other topics. Um, you know, so you guys can improve how you're growing the food if it's important to you. How can social media help gardeners? So I think, you know, social media is basically just another tool. It's like a hoe. Yeah, I like hoes. Which <laughs> I don't own a hoe. <laughs> I like to rent them. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's a joke. Um, but <laughs> social media is just a tool like a hoe or a shovel or a rake or a trowel basically to, to be more efficient at gardening, right? I mean, you could dig with your hands, you could use your hands to rake, I do it plenty, cleaning up stuff. But social media is just a tool to connect people and also get you guys more familiar and more educated about gardening, things that you may not know, things that are not being taught in universities. You know, I get to show you guys things when I travel all around that you're not gonna see anywhere else unless you travel those places, ask the questions that I did, you know, you're not going to learn some of the stuff that I'm learning. So, you know, information basically comes down to is an incredible tool and the social media makes this more widely available to people easily. And it's for free, right? I mean, I don't have a book. I don't have any DVDs, although one day my, I aspire to have a book or DVD or something. Probably most likely a book. But all my videos are free and they will always be free, you know, because I think information should be free and I'm more in tune with the open source model you know, these days, uh, you know, for, for the world at large and corporations. Uh, let's see here. 
how has making your own YouTube videos helped you be a successful gardener? Well, there's a few things that's helped me become more successful. You know, one of my favorite sayings is to become a better teacher, you need to become a better student, right? My glass is always half full in learning. I'll never know it all. I don't know it all. I mean, I know what I know of what I've had experience with. People will ask me all these crazy questions that I have no idea about because I haven't had experiences with those and I haven't looked into that and I haven't dealt with it personally in my garden. I mean, I could tell you my top five, you know, crops that do well in the winter, my top five crops that do well in the summer in this particular climate. And, you know, you're not really going to get that in a book, even master gardeners, you know, they may have different ideas about things, but I know what does well and what doesn't based on my experience. And that's how I'm taught. I mean, basically, I'm taught on experience and, you know, having to become a better teacher for you guys to be able to explain this in, in layman's terms, many of the different techno uh, terms and all these technologies and things that I learned about to be able to explain this to you guys is make me better. It makes me understand it better and it makes me be able to uh, uh, retain the information longer, you know, when I think of it in different ways. So that's made me better. Plus also it's made, it's made me a better gardener because, I mean, I have a record of my garden. You know, it's cool when I do a garden tour every season. I usually generally do a garden tour. And I could see what I planted that season and I could review, you know, because I don't, you, good gardeners take notes on what they're growing and how it did and all this stuff. As I said, I'm not a big writer and all this kind of stuff. But I have videos where I could go back to different videos and see, oh man, that year I planted this. And oh yeah, those guys did really well. And I can see how I did it, how I set it up in case I need to, a refresher course. Plus I visit so many places, man, like I retain a high percentage of the knowledge that I've learned everywhere, but I can't possibly remember everything. I'm only human, right? And so I have videos, uh, my reference library, literally my encyclopedia that I could always refer back to, you know, to regain the knowledge or learn the knowledge or learn that little tidbit like, oh yeah, I'm doing this in my garden today. Oh yeah, I made that video two years ago about a place that I was already doing it. So let's go ahead and review that and then implement the procedures and things they've done because they already, you know, went to the school of hard knocks. So those are primarily the two ways that, you know, the YouTube has made me a better gardener. Let's see, anything else you'd like to add in regards to your success, sustainable living, and growing your own food? You know, I just want to encourage everybody out there, if you're not already growing your own food, there's no excuses not to start today. I don't care if it's the winter time, the summer time, 120 degrees outside where you live, 20 below. You can always grow a garden inside sprouts and microgreens. I have a handful of videos on these topics. You know, be sure to check my past videos for those. I want you guys to start growing today. And more importantly than just growing the food is I want you to consume a good portion of the food that you're growing, right? Don't just grow it for fun, for ornamental purposes. Actually harvest it, eat it as a big portion and staple of your diet to minimize all the other processed foods and junk foods that you still may be eating, all the other animal foods and everything else. Because I'll tell you one thing that I've learned over all these years, the more high quality fresh fruits and fresh vegetables you eat, the healthier you're going to be to you know, maintain a good weight, to keep your brain cognition, to be healthier, to be fit and trim with minimal exercise. Because <laughs> that's what I do. That's what I've been doing, right? I do exercise. I get in the garden and do stuff. But I don't like run marathons. You know, I go biking for fun. I sprint here and there. But I'm in you know, good shape for, you know, just because I eat healthy, because I'm not eating the bad stuff, you know, your diet is not about what you're, you know, eating, but it's about what you're not eating. So I want you to maximize the stuff you guys are growing, the highest quality food on the planet, minimize all the other crap, get it out of your life. And yeah, if you want to have a treat of a chocolate chip cookie every Friday night, because you still love them, that's great. But eat mostly fresh fruits and vegetables for the win. I guess that's probably the last thing that I want to say. This video is getting quite long. I do have a few other quick Q&As that I'm going to get into. Uh, Andrew Chi as hello John I live in an apartment in Florida I get less than two hours of full sun on some of my plants but the rest of the day it's not too shady and not direct sun either it's been a little hard for me to grow fruiting plants I was wondering if maybe I should have a grow light on each of my containers what should I do thank you for your help all right Andrew so what I'd recommend is you know I do use some grow lights I don't really like to use them I like to use natural sunlight whenever possible you know, I would recommend instead of trying to modify your space to grow, 
you know, food with lights, I would recommend finding another space, whether that means maybe moving down a couple apartments that gets more sun, if you can easily do that. For some people that might not be, you know, uh, possible. I would recommend getting a community garden plot or finding somebody with some land so that you can grow in a full sunny position outside in the soil in a raised bed instead of containers because always in containers you're not going to get as much production as you could growing you know in soil using natural methods in natural sunlight that being said if you really want to do it you can get some you know lights to help increase production but that being said you know now you're gonna have to be spending money for electricity to do that and is that money and electricity worth getting you know a few extra tomatoes that taste amazing and only you guys can answer that question. I will say that if you do want to do this, I would recommend a light bulb that I actually bought and I will have a video on really soon. It's uh, actually available at Costco for $39.99. It's a four foot shop light and it has two LED bulbs already pre-installed. So it's high lumen. It's uh, relatively inexpensive. It should last a long time. And it's uh, you know going to cost you minimal on electricity usage to get a maximum amount of light that's well dispersed. I'm going to be using it actually for seed starting, so stay tuned for an upcoming video on me setting up my rig. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. The other thing I would say is I'd focus on if you can't grow fruiting crops in your shady area, just focus on what grows really well in your shady area to have the highest quality herbs and the leafy greens, and then, you know, purchase some of the other things that you need to go out to a local farmer's market or try to get a community garden plot and grow some stuff somewhere else. All right, Jaffa5555. Hi, John. What do you do with all your excess fruit and vegetable you cannot eat each season? So in general, as you guys can see, I have a huge garden here. And, you know, uh, I have a kind of unique approach. You know, I like to harvest a little bit at a time. I harvest like side shoots, side leaves, baby leaves when I'm eating salads. And I like to leave a lot of leaf matter on the plant because if you strip down your plant too much, then it actually can't reproduce as fast. And while I do like eating leaves off my collard greens and broccoli and cauliflower and brussels sprouts you know i really want them to make the flower in the case of the cauliflower and the broccoli so i just try to harvest the outside leaves and eat those in you know blended smoothies and fresh juices actually my girlfriend loves using those guys as wraps and salads also make things like kale chips collard chips you know brussels sprout chips in the dehydrator i had to have videos on how to do all these different things i also uh, pickle them and also dehydrate them. So these are the, all the ways I use them. Also friends come over I give them some stuff sometimes and if I don't end up using it, guess what? It goes back and feeds me anyways in my compost. All right. Oh, last question today. Shane Christopher. Hey John, you had a video from an herbal nursery outside Austin, Texas. You noted the wild dogma plant. I hope I spelled it right. I have tried to do research on this plant and can find nothing. Any chance you can help me with some advice or direction on info for this plant? Cheers. All right, Shane. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, all my videos are 100% unscripted and just come at the top of my mouth. And, you know, I have to learn incredible amounts of information for each video. Many, much of it I know. Some of it is new information to me. And I don't always get it correct. I'm only human, so I want you guys to cut me some slack. I say things that are maybe a little bit off sometimes, but 99% of the time I'm pretty accurate. And usually if something is wrong, I get it edited out. That one I missed actually it is actually called the wild Daga plant, D-A-G-G-A, -G -G if you are interested in that. And that is basically a, a, a psychoactive plant, I guess, uh, medicinal, if you want to consider it like that. I do actually do not advocate smoking any plants. I like to just eat them raw for their beneficial effects or juice them. And stay tuned for a really cool episode on uh, making some cannabis juice. One of the best ways you can consume the cannabis. Anyway, that's the last question for today. This video is pretty long already. Give me guys a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you're not already. And be sure to check my past episodes. I have over a thousand episodes now on all aspects of garden gardening. So that you guys could start gardening or continue to enjoy and improve your gardening skills. Uh, once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time, and until then, remember, keep on growing.